off. It's rather warm in here. Well, well, hasn't it been all too long? It's good to see you. Oh, I seem to have missed my chance, so I, Siegfried of Katerina, offer my deepest gratitude and a little surprise to go with it. It's all yours. I know. Won't you join me for dinner? I make a fine Esther soup. I've got some stewing right now. Even we undead deserve a little normalcy from time to time. And finally, upon this rendezvous, let us make a toast. To your valor, my sword, and our sworn duties. Long may the sun shine. <laughs> Have you heard? Somewhere, hidden right here in Irithil, is a deep dungeon. And even below that, the profaned capital, home of Yorm, the reclusive giant lord. That reminds me, I've a grave promise to keep. Oh, sorry. I'm afraid I've cast a cloud over things. Well, I'm going to have myself a little nap. The only thing to do, really, after a nice toast. <laughs> So, welcome back to Dark Souls 3. This is part 9 of our Hellbird run. Last time we went through Irithil of the Boreal Valley. And I said to skip talking to Sigurd when we're doing that, but once you beat Pont of Sullivan and you got Grey Rat back safe and sound, then you're free to talk to him. And there is this continuation, this little hole that goes downward, but that's not where we're going to go. See, our next stop is the Pont of Sullivan boss room. Because there's a bit more to go here. There's one more area before we can go after that hole. And I don't know if the pop-up is going to be here or off to the left. I think here. Nope. Nope. And they're gonna go away, that's fine. I can come back and get them later. Large start night turn. If I do need that. Because I haven't needed a single twinkling night night yet. Not this run. But here maybe? Oh wait, no, it's up top. Alright, so, yeah, we're not getting that pop-up for a bit. Never mind. It shows how long it's been since I played this game. But... Even though there isn't a pop-up yet, suggesting that this is still Irithil, Dark Stone Plate Room. I would still personally consider this section to be like the start of An Orlando. And there's some enemies throwing fireballs. And so we're gonna want to deal with them before heading backwards. It's just these three that aggro on right away though, so. Hey. 
Well, this one turned around. So he can also die. But we should be able to ignore the rest of them. Keyword on should. Because I usually just kill the first three and then move back. And it's fine. But over here there's a large Titan Knight shard. And here's the stairs that we came up. But if we turn around from there, there's a doorway. And we have a very... <laughs> I mean, technically it's a shortcut, but it, sh it saves like 10 seconds. So it doesn't make a big difference. But killing them gets the simple gem. Simple gem is kind of like the intelligence version of the blessed gem. But instead of giving you HP back, it gives you FP. So... Good if you use a lot of magic. Despite being called the simple gem, it's good for intelligence builds. <laughs> take that as you will. Also, take this m mimic <laughs> walking in circles as you will. I'll take it as a sign of an easy kill. Getting us the golden ritual spear. And we're not going to use that because... This isn't the spear run. But still... Good to sell, at least. Like, at the very least, we can sell it for some souls. Here's the shortcut door. How much time it really saves is... Maybe a little questionable. In general, the shortcuts here don't save a whole lot of time. Like, both in Irithyll... ...and in An Orlando. They just don't save a lot of time. It's a little weird, but... I don't know, maybe they weren't entirely sure what to do with the area. But I am sure on what to do with these guys. And it's to overhead slam and slash until they die. And that's quite an easy thing to do. Quite easy. The spear one drops the Drain Twin Spears, but... Nothing from the hammer one. Because you already got the Drain Twin Hammers way back in the Cathedral of the Deep. And here... This giant stands up and quickly goes back down. There's an item over here. Yoink, large titan knight shard. Very nice. The giant dropped another large titan knight shard. Also very nice. There's a soul here and this giant wakes up as well. But you can get a few swings on their head, since they're laying down. And another large Titanite shard. Very nice. Now, coming up into here... This back wall is an illusory wall. 
And this is a very, very, very long ladder. That leads down to two enemies that I'm not gonna fight. Partially because the ladder going down is so long that it would waste a lot of time. And partially because there's nothing down there for us to run. Large Titan Night Shard. And like, yeah, generally, I'm being pretty thorough, Easterner's Ashes, but even though I'm generally being thorough, I'm not taking that as a hard rule of needing to get every single item. Like, for example, there is a great bow down there. Which I'm not gonna get. Because... It just seems like a bit of a waste of time. So I'm just gonna send those enemies down. So that way they don't shoot me while I'm up here. <laughs> Ooh, two more Titanite shards. That is something I remember saying I needed. I believe I needed five. Ew. So rude. I believe there's an item down there and a shortcut, but don't need it. Now over here and to the right, as you can see, there's an opening. Normally there's an illusory wall there, but because we did uh, Yuria's quest, it's now open. So, we can head down here and talk to this guy, person, I don't know. Welcome, our gracious lord. Your spouse awaits you. You are very near. Please, take the sword of a vow. May you be the truest lord. Of Londor yet. Your spouse awaits you. You are very near. May you be the truest lord of Londor yet. So, despite it being called a sword, uh, Brasset, but despite it being called a sword, you can't use it as a weapon. It's just a key item, sadly. And off to the right here, hidden behind a lot of fog, is the reversal ring. And then here, there's some flowers, and Anery, and doing the right of a vowel will get us a cutscene.
and that gets us three more dark sigils, putting us at a total of eight. And yet, you, you can see there for a quick second, it said Anne Orlando, despite us not getting the pop-up for Anne Orlando just yet. But, quitting the game, we can pick up Anne-Marie's straight sword. Which, I believe, uh, yet, yeah, only, it was once the sword of an earnestly noble figure, and its attacks are boosted by that elusive, essential property unique to humans, luck. And so it scales with luck. And also here you can get chameleon, which is one of my personal favorite sorceries but this isn't a sorcery run so can't really use it though it has a very low requirement yeah just 12 intelligence but we head up the spiral staircase we can push this and then we head over to this opposite side. And you can actually go fast enough to run off and die. If you care about that. But here, in Orlando. Now you can go down here. And running down the staircase, there's an invisible thing you can walk along, like an invisible walkway. And here there's a bonfire, an NPC with a, a covenant. And then you got Painting Guardian Curved Sword. All along with Painting Guardian Set. And in one of the New Game Pluses, I don't remember if it's one or two. You can also get uh, one of Havel's Rings. While heading down. I don't care about the Covenant, so I'm not gonna get that, but yeah, there's that. So we got that. And we could probably go back to Firelink to get like an extra level or two, but I'm not gonna do that. Instead, we're just gonna continue on where there's this silver knight with a spear and I have gotten very good at dodging that lightning attack. Because the amount of sip, but the amount of times I've had to kill these things to get proof of a Concord kept. is very sad. And here, giant door. If you did a different version of Anary's quest, then you can be summoned by them here. And then you can help Anary kill the boss of this area. And that can help you get a little bit of experience on the boss. Before going in yourself. Which can be nice.
but also unlike when you summon an NPC to help you with a boss uh, doing that doesn't actually kill the boss for you or get you the reward and so it'd be really cool if uh, taking the summon sign here actually killed the boss or got you like their boss soul uh giant's coal which lets you get lightning simple and chaos which lightning is a lightning simple again it gives you fp i think it gives you magic damage as well, but I'm not sure. And chaos is fire. But... Even if it didn't kill the boss, or give you... A, uh, like, didn't give you their boss soul. It, it would have been nice to get something outside of the end of the quest. I don't know, just anything. Like, even just like a decent chunk of souls would have been nice. Because how it currently is, I don't think you get that many. I could definitely be mistaken, but I don't think you get that many souls from helping Anri kill them. Over here, there's Nesta Shard. But I, I think my main problem comes from I just don't really like the boss that much. <laughs> because if, if it was something... Ooh. But if it was something like Twin Princes, where I actually really enjoy fighting the boss or like dragon slayer armor I get any boss that I just actually enjoy which this is Dark Souls 3 it's got one of the best Okay, Jesus Christ. This thing can turn on a dime. And it's got good range. And my curse buildup is not going down. Jesus. Get away from me, you freak. But a good, like, half of Dark Souls 3's boss lineup is just really, really, really solid. And so if it was any boss that I enjoyed fighting, I wouldn't care about having to fight them twice. It's just the fact that it's not a fun boss. I shouldn't say not a fun boss, just... Not nearly the same level of quality. As you come to expect from Dark Souls 3. But 
Man, you're just not giving up on this one, are you? you you're just really going, huh? You just... Mm. You, you, you want to take a trip all the way down to a... Uh, you want to take a trip to Fair and Keep? I don't think it liked that suggestion. I don't really care that it didn't like that suggestion. We're going back to Firelink. I have not fought the thing in so long I don't remember any of its moves. Or like how to properly deal with it. But... A kill is a kill, I suppose. Ah, our lord and liege. I presume thy holy vows are sworn. Wonderful. Now thou art the true and deserving lord of hollows. With the spouse, the strength to claim the fire is thine. Thy lordship, I prithee wrest the fire from its mantle. I... Uria and all Londor embrace thy impending lordship. O oh, lord and liege, I prithee, play the usurper. When the moment cometh to link the fire, wrest it from its mantle. The age of fire was founded by the old gods, sustained by the linking of the fire. But the gods are no more, and the all-powerful fire deserveth a new heir. Our Lord of Hollows, it shall be who weareth the true face of mankind. Be safe, I prithee rest. See this? That's the true face of mankind. I, I do like how I have the Executioner set, and I executed Henry. That just seems fitting. Jeez. What? Well, seems like ages past. I imagine his passing was long ago. I miss the old bugger, I do. My thanks. I'll be sure this coal is put to good use. I'll be smithing weapons never afore seen by the likes of ye. It's but a small service to pay my humble respects. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah, simple... Cuts down on your physical damage, gives you magic damage. Cuts down on your strength and dex scaling, but gives you intelligence scaling. And like I said, holding a simple weapon gives you FP back, so... It's not as much as the HP regeneration, but... It's still something, so... Pretty, I go... Ah? Gracious, let I know. All right, so real quick, we can sell some things here. Don't want that. Don't really want that. Uh, not gonna use the brass set or the painting guardian set. Not this run. Nor the deacon set. Uh, not a. Mm. Now we can get rid of it. Anything that isn't... Anything that doesn't raise item discovery, soul, acquisition, or is a hellbird, we can get rid of. Gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna keep this just because I really like Chameleon.
Oh, look at those souls. Beautiful, beautiful. But Easterner's Ashes will one once you finish Anne's quest, you can buy the Elite Knight set. Which the armor looks very nice. But once you give the Easterner's Ashes, you can buy the Eastern set. Which also looks very nice. You can buy Oni Slayer Great Arrows. Maybe Dark Arrows? Because I don't remember where they came from. And the Washing Pole. Oh, we can buy large Titanite Shards now. That's nice. I'm not going to, but that's nice. Ashen One. But welcomes very well then taken. Uh vitality it would probably be good to get vitality to like twenty five or so. Let's see nine ten. Alright. Okay. Farewell, Ashen made But for right now. We got our halberd, we got the full set, like our full heavy set, and we can still have a good roll, so. I'm not really concerned about having enough to like have a small shield or enough to have a torch. Those really aren't my concerns. Having health, because I'm still rusty, and more health means more mistakes allowed. More stamina because more stamina is always good. I mean, more stamina is never not a good thing. Uh, I tuned out for a second. There you go. Uh, oof. I don't know what the camera was doing there, but... Large Titan Egg Shard. Anyways. But... More health is always good, especially when... You're rusty and making mistakes. More stamina is always good more damage is usually good. It might sound weird to hear someone say that damage is mostly good and not always good. But when trying to learn, like for example, if you don't know an enemy's moveset or a boss's moveset, more damage can actually be a small hindrance because that means that that enemy or that boss dies faster and them dying faster means you aren't engaged in the fight as long I don't remember if they do darker magic We can say both. But, so in that specific sense, less damage can be good. But, 
more damage is usually good. Ow. We had more damage. Usually good. There's like... I don't really need a shield. And if I do need a shield, then I can just move over to the deserter helmet. This is why I don't like Aldridge. Because phase two is just, they teleport, they do the barrage of magic arrows, I rolled too early, and then they do those tiny little bubble things that go after you. Those little purple things. And then... By the time... The arrow attack is over... And then the bubbles are over... They just do the arrow attack again. I really need to relearn that attack. because it's really not that difficult to dodge. But... Yeah, like I said, it's just this, endlessly. It's just the bow attack, and then the bubbles, and then the giant laser. And then the bubbles, and then the arrows, and then the giant laser. And then you finally get to them. And you can get like two attacks in. And then they just teleport to the other side of the room. And then it just starts all over again. But Cinders of a Lord, Soul of Aldrich, 55,000 souls. That's pretty good. And then, like, with their boss soul, you don't even really get anything good out of it. It's like, you can get, I believe, a sorcery or a bow. Neither of which are nearly as good as the Sun Princess Ring, which I love dearly. Because... HP, 903, 905, 907, 909. Now, by this point in the game, that probably doesn't do a whole lot, but... If you have the DLC, you get the Ethereal Oak Shield, and you get a Blessed Weapon, paired with this, especially paired with like Ring of the Evil Eye, and maybe a weapon that gives you HP upon killing enemies, you can go through entire areas without using a single sip of Estus. And I don't really do it anymore, 
but I used to be super into co-op, and whenever someone asked for help in one of the first, like, three areas, basically, if they helped, or if they asked for help in a pre-Abyss Watcher area, I'd drop them the Sun Princess Ring, because it's useful, it's nice, especially super early on when you don't have a lot of health or a lot of Estus, and each sip of Estus doesn't give a lot of health. But it's not, like, game-breaking, because it's 2 HP. 2 HP a second is not a game-breaking amount of health. And so, it's just, like, a nice quality-of-life thing without being game-breaking. And I always find it to be really nice. Uh -huh. so. Yeah, Life Hunt Scythe Miracle... Or a bow that does magic damage. And skills with intelligence. Again, I did a full bow build where I used nothing but bows once I made it to Firelink Shrine. And, I mean, I didn't level up intelligence, so I didn't use this bow, but... Mm. Now, yeah, the skill Dark Moon Arrow... Like, there's two different Dark Moon arrows, and I feel like you get the Phase 1-1, one one, where it's like a shotgun and not a continuous endless rain. So I don't imagine that'd be super, super strong. And then Life on Scythe is okay, but... Treat the fire. I, again, just... Personally, I consider the Sun Princess Ring to be better than both of those. Uh -huh. And 15,000 is nice. So I'll take that. Not using the Silver Knight shield. And yeah, we can keep Ashen all these. One. Huh. Welcome, very then take. And here. 26, 26. Uh, we're close to another level. Not quite there yet. Although... I should have the torch. Ooh. No, we can do the full executioner set, plus lucerne, plus torch, and still not hit 70%. Nice. Alright, we're... Th Three levels away from being able to have the Lulin shield, though. Welcome, very then take. But I'd be better to go with that. I shouldn't want me. But, all right. So, I think we can do distant manor, and then make it to Irithel dungeon, and then stop. I think that's fair. Though I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is there's two halberds. Like there's two halberds that we have to grind. And one of them is that. And I'm thinking maybe not both, but it might be good to grind the one that these guys drop. Uh, bef like after finishing this recording, but before starting the next one, so you don't have to deal with that. Large Titanite Night Shard. Again, just maybe, though, because I can do that anytime. And... 
grinding it after because in the next like one to two areas if you're in Embered you're gonna get invaded here by the way but in the next two areas we're going to get the gold serpent ring which boosts item discovery so it could be good to get that before you done but anyways could be good to get that before doing any grinding considering you know the whole random drop thing also it is stupidly easy to abuse their AI stupidly easy just a jog backwards which will cause them to jog after you and then hit the attack button and then turn around for certain medium speed weapons like halberds and great swords npc invaders just have no idea what to do and it becomes super easy to just bully them but you take them out you get the murakumo which is a curved great sword and I believe, not 100% sure, but I believe you need to kill him for an armor set to appear later on. Either way, we got through all of Anor Londo. We got the Sun Princess Ring, one of my personal favorite rings in the entire series. We got the second Cinders of a Lord. We got married. And... That, that might not sound like a lot, but that's pretty good progress. So, I'm pretty happy with that. And, uh, yeah.